This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Stay tuned to find out more. Since its inception, hip hop, like punk music, has been used as a means to promote rebellion. Some of its most cherished voices made their names as outliers who boldly stood up to injustice and societal ills. From Chuck D to Most Def, Dead Prez, and Kendrick Lamar, these artists saw the systemic problems and did what they could not only to defy them, but shine light on their roots which may have otherwise gone unseen by the masses. However, what happens when a rapper uses hip-hop to propel dangerous sentiments, take on identity politics, and propel hatred towards their fellow man? And even worse, what if he didn't even mean it and was doing it for clout in the same way as a 6 9 Except that rather to attempt to gain street cred through their gang affiliations, it's white supremacists. Here we find the Canadian-born Tom McDonald, a rapper who has simultaneously been ignored by the mainstream while picking up an immense amount of support among the more right-wing corners of white suburbia. A former pro wrestler, Tom's inspirations behind his rap style are all too predictable and all center around a lifelong love affair with Slim Shady. I've owned every album that guy ever put out, he reflected, with the exception of the last few years, but when I was a kid, that was like my go-to. I wouldn't be here right now without Eminem. But where Eminem left any discriminatory rhetoric towards black women behind in the 80s with foolish pride, a lot of Tom's success has come from dabbling in offensive narratives. However, that wasn't how his rap career began. After what he described as a pretty lengthy battle with alcoholism and a year-long breakdown, an impoverished McDonald eschewed his earlier attempts to mimic the style of other rappers, instead seeking to hold hip-hop to account for how it contributed to his problems with 2017's Dear Rappers. Rather than trying to lead with any understanding or historical context for everything that happens in mainstream today, Tom led with vilifying the genre and used its negative stereotypes as an indictment. I haven't looked into the hip hop demograph recently, but I remember a couple of years ago when I looked into it, it was like 14 to 20 year old white American youth. It was pretty young, mm -hmm. pretty influential kids. Somewhere things took a turn. Hip hop traditionally was about fighting the power and being against the man and having your voice heard. It spoke a lot about a lot of social issues and power to the people and stuff. And then somewhere along the way, you had like sort of the gangster era of everything. It seems to lean pretty heavily on prescription pill abuse. Not all hip hop, but a lot of hip hop. As an independent artist, Tom sought to find his fans and leveraged Facebook to succeed in a way that he believed would be impossible today. And right from the bat, he self-admittedly led with clickbait. Ever feel like subscription boxes can get a little bit repetitive? For those who don't know, a subscription box is like a streaming service, but physical. You subscribe, and in exchange, you're sent a box of items every month. The problem with these boxes is that you're usually getting the same thing every single month, and you don't even get to pick your box. With Bespoke Post, you'll never get bored again. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top-shelf goods from under-the-radar brands. It's free to join, and you can cancel anytime. The cool thing about Bespoke Post is that they deliver right to your door from an endlessly rotating selection of cool new products like outdoor gear, clothing, home and kitchen goods, and much more. Not sure where to start? How about the Weekender Box? It provides a specially designed mason bag with a reinforced frame and thick leather handles. Or try the Explore Box, designed to meet the needs of a true adventurer. It contains a Nomad backpack, M8 water bottle, a survival LED headlamp, and a delicious toasted coconut and vanilla bean bar. Each box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. And the best part is 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. So head over to bespokepost.com slash madness20 and take the quiz to get started. Or click the link in the description and enter madness20 at checkout to get 20% off your first order. The way that Facebook and those platforms were operating back then, I don't think we realized it at the time, but that was like the Wild West. If you had a song that sounded good and you put some like captions on it, like, oh my God, I can't believe this rapper said this. Fire or trash, I put 500 bucks on it, it would it was gone. All the platforms now, they're so heavily involved in censorship and suppression of free speech. I feel like we just snuck in through that door before they slammed it closed. Seeking to play the role of a moral compass that he wasn't fit for, Tom realized that controversy created clicks. And soon, he leaned into the backlash and remodeled himself as the antithesis of everything we generally believe hip hop should be. Released at a time where notions such as cancel culture and the fight for racial equality allowed some white Americans to believe that their way of life was being threatened, Tom made his next big splash with a track known as White Boy, which took those misgivings and turned them into the most self-righteous track imaginable. And just as he'd intended, it began to get noticed. Who is saying this to you? Are you getting pulled over because you're white? No one likes me because I'm Caucasian. I feel like the kind of people who would feed into this song are the exact types of people who might see uh, black people getting angry online about things like police brutality and Z you, just get over it. Meanwhile, in, in this guy's head, oh, 
knows someone said something mean about white people on Twitter. If that bothers you, welcome to a sliver of what anybody who's ever actually been persecuted has ever had to endure. Even if not all the attention was positive. Although he since claimed that his adoption by white nationalists freaked me the fuck out, Tom soon found himself with a supposedly anti-woke fan base who saw him as a vessel for their truth. And while he's since told Rolling Stone that he hopes to show people that I'm not just some brainwashed right-wing zombie, the correlation between Fox News' news cycle, hot-button issues, and his output is no coincidence. From fat shaming to abortion and racism, Tom's entire MO hinges on getting a reaction. And in that regard, he's cut from the same cloth as any 4chan edgelord. And now, whether he likes it or not, he's trapped himself in a box of his own devising. I'm not just the white conservative rap guy, he told Rolling Stone. I've also done a lot of stuff that's not politically charged, but that doesn't seem to get digested and championed the same way, for obvious reasons. Over the years, he's put up the facade that he played the middle from the outset of his career, claiming, I'm not pro-Trump, I'm not anti-Trump, I'm pro-people. I'm not taking sides in white trash. I'm showing understanding and being sympathetic towards a group of voters who rarely get the luxury of either of those things. And while he's since tried to backpedal with tracks like If I Was Black, it doesn't change the fact that his example emboldened other rappers to go even further than him. In turn, creating a subgenre of ultra-conservative rap that's given a platform to the likes of Tyson James, whose biggest track features the chorus, Y'all about to make me pull a written house, bring the muscle, pull up at a politician house, and Adam Calhoun, a frequent collaborator of Tom's who has used the N-word on wax several times. In the eyes of those who've taken part in his videos, such as actor Adam Pepper, Tom doesn't ever truly distance himself from that bread and butter fan base, no matter how much he claims he does. Tom's music flirts with neo-Nazi, he remarked. It flirts with white power. I think sometimes he puts black people in his videos to make it easier to digest. From fake woke to straight white male, Tom has routinely sought to tap into his fan base whenever he needs a boost of publicity or support. And in fairness, it has worked. In spite of being independent, Tom's tracks and albums have outshone many artists that we perceive as successful. And with thousands of sales and physical CDs, he's likely making more revenue than some of them as well. However, one thing that does severe damage to his credibility is the fact that for the vast majority of people, his shtick is entirely transparent, as it's clear he's just saying things to provoke outrage while feeding his existing fan base. Like, ever since you've hit it big in a way, you're not really saying uh, the points socially and politically that you do make in your music come from a place of delusion. I don't know, it, it just seems like Tom McDonald is this really annoying fence-sitting type of character in music right now and he will basically say or portray anything as long as it will go viral it'll turn heads you're always plotting and scheming on your next piece of troll bait for your audience it's a process it's a manipulation tom mcdonald comes from this place of extreme inauthenticity the architect of a subgenre that's way more harmful than frat rap ever was tom admits that much of his fame is fueled by disdain telling rolling stone that pretty quickly i sort of realized that the people who didn't like me were doing the most for me. They were the ones that were like, I have to show 30 of my friends this piece of because I hate him. Armed with that knowledge, he's firmly doubled down into that lane, and yet somehow he always sees himself as the victim and believes that it's his ability to court controversy, not his inherently try hard persona, which prevents any mainstream rappers from working with him. Especially when you talk about guys like G-Eazy, Eminem, who are involved in the mainstream music industry. I don't think a lot of them really want to be associated with somebody like me. I think they look at me as, that's dangerous. That guy's a racist. That guy is He's a some raging Republican rapper guy. And if he posts a message that you guys are talking back and forth, or you do a song with him, or you co-sign him, that's going to reflect negatively on your career. And although it can be argued that he's painted himself into a corner, it doesn't change the fact that without that far-right fan base, he'd basically have nothing. Let's face it, he certainly wouldn't be selling over 100,000 CDs based on lyrical ability, or if the content didn't appeal to his niche audience. And as a result, he's got to remain polarizing. And that's exactly where he's excelled. Um, people are so dumb, and I'm the smart guy. Which I suppose to an extent is true, because uh, Tom has certainly assembled a, a gaggle of morons to either uh, support everything he says or react to everything he says negatively. And while Fantano, and of course myself, are bolstering his brand by talking about him, it doesn't change the fact that when it comes to hip-hop, he's misappropriating what the art form is truly used for. After all, hip-hop is a culture that's devised to stand up for those who've been marginalized. And whether he'd like to admit it or not, his music actually upholds the values of corporations such as Fox News while he's posing as a counterculture figure. How is talking about the discrimination that people suffer at the hands of their identity, or rather the way their identity is treated, by society and by the system, how is that not being anti-system? That is being against the conformity that the system forces on all of us. Stop whining about how unfair life is.
is stop complaining so much. That is pro system. That is telling people to stop worrying about the status quo and the way things are. Stop trying to change things. That is pro system. You when he's not pushing for clout with his music, he's doing so by reaching for an Eminem disc with alternative readings of his lyrics or purchasing an $100,000 NFT just to get a hold of a shady beat that he'd never get under any other circumstances. But even if he seems innocuous and goofy in this sense, it doesn't change the fact that his presence is dangerous, as he's not the only willing to cosplay as a white supremacist, but acts as a gateway to others with genuine extremist values. In a prime example, his recent project, The Brave, sold more than 48,000 copies. And with lyrics like, Tolerance is great until you speak and you're a target. If a white man paints his face black, he's a piece of garbage. But you can put him in a dress and he's courageous and he's gorgeous. Or, call a dad a deadbeat for neglecting his boys but a mom kills a baby and you call it pro-choice. It means that tirades like this from Tom become normalized to his audience and likely reinforced pre-existing attitudes. But while this would be ill-advised on its own, it becomes more alarming when paired with contributions from Calhoun, such as, try to take our freedoms, that's how you get shot up, got our back against the wall, just try to stop us. More guns, more ammunition, please stock up. Providing the sort of idealism that led to the January 6th insurrection in hip hop form, Tom's presence legitimizes the likes of Calhoun. And while no one is suggesting that these bars would radicalize someone, it still doesn't change the fact that it's providing anthems of intolerance in a way that has no counterpart in mainstream hip hop. Masquerading as a voice of the forgotten, while he's closer to a puppet of the right wing media cycle, you can bet that Tom will continue to subtly stroke hatred in his alleged truth for as long as it's monetizable. And while there's no danger of him ever being credible, we can only hope that his ruse becomes more and more transparent to his fans over time.